Apoyemi Ogutade, who is a senior investment analyst from Financial Derivatives, is, uh, is here with me in the studios. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. I was just talking about Twitter and that the uh, Assistant General yes. is on Twitter uh, about the latest inflation. I'm just trying to uh, get a hang on that. What, what did you see? Um, Talk to us. So, you know, inflation, headline inflation dipped slightly to 17.24%. Um, 17.24%. Yes, and was 17 that in, in tune with your... Uh, projections at FDC. I'm trying to check what your uh, uh, folks at uh, Rajesh uh, Lanka. I think they were, they were looking at 17.11 percent. So, uh, what was the reading from uh, yeah, our financial of, derivatives? Yeah, in terms of the direction, yes, obviously we um, got the um, the prediction right. Obviously, we're a bit more aggressive as to the decline because um, based on the data provided by NBS, it was just a marginal about uh, two basis points from 17.26 to 17.24. But more importantly... Why, why are you aggressive? Why are you analysts that <laughs> are financial derivatives aggressive about inflation or a little bit cautious? Let me put it that way. Well, um, it's based on what the model provides. You know, you're putting your data into your, you know, your model and the results that is provided from the model is what you, you know, you read it on there. But more importantly, what we're seeing um, from the inflation data, we saw a month-on-month inflation actually um, declined from um, 1.72 from 1.6 from 1.72 to 1.6. Um, after we've had, you know, about two consecutive months or three, two or three consecutive months of an increase in month-on-month -month inflation. So obviously that's good news. And um, but on the on the bad side, food inflation is still going up, you know, from 18.44 to about 19 percent. So yeah, um, the inflation numbers are looking good in terms of headline inflation and the month-on-month -month inflation. But in terms of food inflation, we're still seeing an increase in that in that regard. Uh, it, it, so um, what some analysts says was that. Um uh, petrol, diesel, kerosene prices, and energy costs, yeah. electricity, yeah. would most likely be the trigger point for uh, inflation this time around. I is it different? Or you, you, you're more weighted in terms of food, by food index, uh, uh, other than energy costs? Well, um, as you rightly mentioned, it's all dependent on the weight. Um, and well, what we're seeing is obviously food index has a certain level of weight, and we're also seeing that energy and a couple of other things um, in the in the basket declined. And if you're looking at, for instance, diesel, um, we've seen diesel prices have declined substantially within the past two months. We've also seen an improvement in power supply. Um, as at yesterday, um, power generation went up by about I think three percent to three thousand, um, three thousand over three thousand nine hundred megawatts. So energy costs are improving. Um, diesel from, la from last month to this month even we've seen that diesel prices have dropped to about 170 um, naira to a litre but what we're still seeing is that food inflation is still increasing this is the planting season you have a lot of you know um, seasonal factors affecting food prices tomatoes for instance you know tomato prices have increased although relative to last week they're flat so that's what we're seeing in the market this week. Uh, look at where the, the big conversation really is now as far as the budget was concerned. Yeah. Uh, you've taken some time to look at the big figures. We don't have the details yet, as it were, as yeah. finalized by the legislatures. Um, well, it's pretty much still the same, really. Um, I know for agriculture, the budget allocation was about 1.8%. Um, but forgetting the numbers right now, there are a couple of other things that come into play in terms of how it affects food prices. So there's, you know, there's the CAPEX spending on infrastructure, and um, which is going to f filter into, you know, logistics and distribution costs, you know, improving roads, you know, setting up rail networks to transport goods from the point of, you know, origination to the point of where it will be sold. So all those things would filter into the prices of domestic commodities, although we cannot, we cannot give you a timeline that this is, you know, going to happen immediately because there's still a time lag between the budget, when the budget is implemented and when we feel the impact in the market. And looking at, you know, the, um, the, the interview by the finance minister yesterday, she made a clear point that, look, growth is going to be, the, is going to be a function of, you know, um, the proper implementation of the budget. So there's still, you know, some issues pertaining to the implementation of that budget. So if it's implemented properly, then we should see, you know, um, some form of positive externalities that would filter into the prices of domestic commodities. Let's bring this down a little bit to the streets beyond the two of us, as it were, when we talk about budget lag, 
um, interest rate lag, inflation rate lag, and yes. what have you, and how it's and how the man on the street perceives 7.441 trillion naira, about 24 billion US dollars, and he says, "I don't see it. I've never seen it. I don't think I'm going to see it." So, uh, what do we mean by the lag, and what's the average time period here? Well, typically, um, it's usually about, I'd say, about six, three to six months before you see the implementation. For the average man, um, uh, or the average man on the street, um, when it comes to the government implementing this budget, so there's a lot of construction that's going to come into play. So there's going to be a lot of hiring of unskilled labor to, you know, work on these construction projects. There's going to be a lot of consulting in terms of, you know, the implementation of this budget. One particular commodity that we know for, for um, that we know that's probably going to increase is the price of um, a bag of cement and this is largely because of increased construction coming from the government so there's going to be a lot of demand coming from the government at the moment cement is about 27 you could see cement increasing to about say 2829 once you know the government starts you know construction projects although typically the, during this um, raining season you don't see a lot of construction coming from um, you know private individuals because you know you want to make sure that whatever you are building up is not going to be disrupted by rainfalls and all that so there could be you know um, um, it, it took a, of a trade out. Exactly. Uh, so, 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 exactly. so, personal so consumption. that's why we don't expect, you know, cement to go through the roof to say 3 5. There's a bit of, you know, a trade off. But you mm. expecting prices to increase because of the demand coming from mm. the government. Oh, when we talk about a lag in budget announcement, spending, and what have you, yeah. is it peculiar to Nigerian environment or is it a global thing? Does it happen like that in developed economies when you really announce budgets on January the 1st and you say, okay, we're spending XYZ? Before you see the, the impact goes to about March, April. Yes. Is it so, peculiar um, to Nigeria? It's, it, I don't think it is peculiar to um, Nigeria because, you know, looking at economic theory, there's also the, um, the issue of velocity of circulation or when, you know, the money, uh, money supply or liquidity is injected into the system. So it's a, it's a matter of um, the circulation of that you know, that liquidity that is injected into the system. So it happens across the board on the globe. It's not just Nigeria. It's, it's an economic phenomenon. You do not expect that as soon as you implement a budget today, the impact is going to be within the next 72 hours. It takes some time for this impact to be felt in the market. Look, look at the price of rice, and you and I had a lot of heated conversations so near of last year about yeah. rice at about 21,000. Yes. Yeah. Per bag, and I was really, really thinking of just doing with Eba, Gary, <laughs> and the rest <laughs> during the during the festivity period of last year. Yeah. So, so rice is down now, and this is part of the good news. Uh, yeah. You folks push out there. Yeah. I like some good news. Even though on the good news, I have only two items, and the bad news looks like a long list. So <laughs> Was that deliberate? <laughs> but good news, price, rice down 14% to 15,000 per bag. Do you think it's something Nigerian like can say, well, from 21,000, well, still not single digit, but. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's an improvement from, you know, it's now below the minimum wage, <laughs> you would say, but. Oh, yeah, so I bag one rice and the rest goes to taxes to take it home. 18,000 is. Minimum it? Wage, but it's, still, it's still double digit. Um, I, I think most Nigerians are still hoping that it will return back to single digit, but um, I, ha I highly doubt that would happen. And the reason why we're seeing rice prices reducing, as a last week increased, and this was because of those, them, the, the customs closed the borders. And as of this week, they've reopened the borders. So we've seen that, you know, so basically what happened last week was a temporary shock. And because the customs have opened up the borders now, we're seeing that filter into rice prices. And that's why we're seeing rice declining to 15,000. Uh, but, but how do all of this, and let's uh, just uh, move on quickly and look at how these consumer goods, current prices in Lagos. Lagos is the center of Nigeria. I make <laughs> very bold to say that. Uh, yes, just like uh, so. Uh, whatever happens in Lagos, that's Nigeria as it were. So what's the percentage in different prices? If we look at Lagos price, maybe if I go online to get a bottle of Coke, it's still the same thing. Uh, some of it are bread. I was eating some slices of bread earlier on. <laughs> <laughs> Prices of this consumer goods are pretty much still um, stable um, for Coke in particular. I know in, the, in, in April we saw you know, the price of Coke increase. So, um, from uh, I'm not going to tell you when I drank a bottle of Coke uh, yeah. because my doctor could be listening. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, for other, co um, for other consumer goods, bread, and uh, what we're seeing driving prices, there's typically the price of flour and other ingredients that are included into um, the price. But it's pretty much stable at this point. The price of a bag of flour is in flat at 10.5. You know, most analysts are expecting that there will be somewhat, there will be.
price war um, in sometime in the future. But for now, we're saying that you know prices are stable at 10.5. And if the price war does start between you know the flour millers in Nigeria, then we could probably see that tapering into the price of. Is, that, the price of price. is there anything globally speaking? If you look at the agri commodities globally, uh, yeah. wheat, corn, uh, and sugar, uh, you are in, in cocoa. Are there anything there that you think is? It will be beneficial to us as we get into new budgetary spending season, giving us a bit of an outlook into the second half of the year. Um, so on the global commodity front, um, what we're seeing with um, global commodities for grains as wheat and corn, we've seen prices have, um, have declined significantly year to date. But what we're seeing now for cocoa, prices are coming back up. I mean, at the beginning of the year, as of last year, cocoa was one of the, you know, the best performing commodities. But now this year, we're seeing prices tapering down, and now they're going back up again. And that's largely because of what's happening in Ivory Coast, you know, with soldiers, um, you know, demanding for um, a pay of salaries of and all that. So, yeah, that a country. bit of political unrest, and that's affecting cocoa prices because we all know that, you know, Ivory Coast is like the largest producer of cocoa. Um, I think what the government could do is probably take advantage. Of of the market because at this point most traders in the markets are a bit cautious with Ivory Coast because they, they wouldn't want to you know make arrangements with them and then end up Ivory Coast end up default, defaulting mm. on it because you know mm. because of social unrest or political mm. unrest so mm. I think what the government can do is try to take a try to ramp up cocoa pr production and also take advantage of um, this political instability we're seeing in Ivory Coast. Uh, very, very interesting yeah. thank you very much uh, let's, let's hang it there for today thank, thank you. you very much for bringing uh, food to our table and tell us how much it costs.